Here you go. This is sunscreen. That's totally sunscreen. That's reef friendly. Well, coral reefs are incredibly important for everyone on this ocean planet. Um, they are the home for about a quarter of all ocean life. They protect communities on the coast like this from uh, you know, storm surges and coastal erosion. They're a huge economic engine. And let's face it, the best waves on the planet break over coral reefs. No reef, no barrel, or no wave. A lot of my favorite waves in the world are over reef breaks. So, you know, to have healthy coral and a healthy ocean to surf in is, uh, means a lot to me. So the mission of sea trees is incredibly simple. It's to protect, restore, and regenerate coastal ecosystems all around the world. The coral reefs are the foundation of everything. Tourism, uh, all the population, the food uh, chain, and everything. So, so no coral reefs, there is no, nothing here. There is no beach, no sand. This sand is not here. This sand is coral. People have been growing seaweed for hundreds of years here. We thought, okay, maybe we could design a, a technique that would be pretty similar, you know? Long time ago, we have the people planting the seaweed, then we changed to plant the coral. All the method was same. Same method with the line, with the rope. This is cool. This is so cool. So the way that we do coral reef restoration, you're never going to be able to actually come back and tell that there was a restoration project here. The methods that we're using are light, fast, and cheap, which means that everywhere around the world can use these exact same techniques um, and have a successful project. Hi. Welcome, Caroline. Nice to meet you. Hey. Welcome back. Out there, we have a nursery where we plant corals. And then after, with all the group of fishermen, we take those corals and we replant them outside. And we try to fix the reef that are damaged outside. Uh, don't they kind of look like, like a little trees? Yeah. Right? Leaching. Leaching, yeah, right. But still can be alive. So it can come back. It can be come back. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. 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 And then it closes over the coral and uh, yeah, the coral is secure. The corals will grow into the reef and they'll actually grow over cool. uh, all this rope, but we're not actually putting plastic into the ocean as a part of doing it. The main idea is to create an ecotourism activity, you know, for some of the gardeners to become guides and instructors and uh, yeah, receive tourists and uh, teach them about corals and help them to plant some coral. One of the innovative techniques that we're using in this project is 3D mapping. We're using GoPro cameras instead of really big expensive cameras and this means that our local community partners can actually do the swimming of the coral reef restoration project that data then gets sent back to our partners at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, who then make a 3D map of the project for us. This technique is very, is very good for us also because it can show us if the different techniques or the different species of coral that we use are actually working well. That makes coral reef restoration and the monitoring of it um, scalable across the world. You know, normally when I come to Indo, it's purely just to surf and be on a surf trip and um, you know, to get the opportunity to, you know, dive, you know, the coral reefs and, um, you know, see Manta Point, see all the beautiful wildlife. The one, like, did, like, a back bend, and I saw, like, all of its gills. It was crazy. <laughs> I was like, holy cow. I thought it was going to eat me, though. It was kind of scary. <laughs> The tourism is important for our local economy, for especially for scuba diving, snorkeling, for the coral reef. <laughs> There's approximately 250 corals that we just um, put down there on the restoration site as of last month. And that's what Roxy and Quicksilver has been helping us do in this project right now.
Everyone knows that Bali has amazing coral reefs, but they also have amazing mangrove forests, right, that are just inside of where those coral reefs are. And it's incredibly important to understand that uh, healthy reefs um, need healthy mangroves, so those ecosystems are like one big loop because the animals and the biodiversity that lives out on the reef has the beginning of their life cycle in the mangrove forest. So if you improve one, you end up improving the other. And look, you see all this black stuff, Roger? Yeah. Right? You know what that is? No. That's carbon. Carbon? That's, that's what these plants end up storing in the mud and the soil, right? So that carbon that gets pulled out of the air by the trees, it's buried right here. So this is what we're actually trying to do. All this black stuff, carbon, we want to put it back in the ground, man. Yeah? Having that next generation of um, young surfers actually come visit the project and seeing him just, you know, right away going after the solutions part of it, like, what can I do? You know, it's, it's experiences like that for me that actually give me hope that, you know, this, this next generation, you know, is going to be rising to the challenge of protecting our oceans and becoming, you know, those advocates that we need. We encourage everyone to come out and visit our project partners here in Bali at Ocean Gardeners to restore coral um, and even do mangrove planting. If you can't do that, then we make it super easy via sea trees. So just go to the website, and within 30 seconds, you'll be planting your first tree in the sea. Organizations like Sea Trees gives me a lot of hope for Rajo's generation to have healthy coral reefs to surf on and enjoy in the future. Raja, a little goofy foot weapon, <laughs> helping the environment and stuff, it's cool. <laughs> and then uh, the reef's so good. I like the reef, I love it.